Fiber optics, optical fiber. We've probably heard of this, but what exactly is it and how does it work? Hello there. For all of you who don't know me, my name is Danny Ward and this is Knowledgeica. From networking and communication to surgery to those wired novelty light things. Fiber optics play a huge role in society. Some of you are probably even watching this video using fiber optic broadband. So that's great. End of the video, right? No, 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 no. We need to find out how this technology works. Three simple words. Total, internal, reflection. Total what now? Is this some unofficial spin-off to Total Recall? Not quite, although admittedly, that would be quite cool. Has anyone got Arnold Schwarzenegger's number? Think he'd be down for that? I'd watch it. But anyway, back to total internal reflection. This is where light bends greater than 90 degrees when it travels through a material, meaning that all the light is reflected back in. Let's apply this concept to fiber optic cables. A fiber optic cable consists of a big old bunch of optic fibers, and these optical fibers are thin glass or plastic strands that are designed for transmitting light. We fire light at one end of the strand, and due to total internal reflection, the light is able to travel within the fiber without any light escape to the other end. Good day. Eh? The glass and plastic core is surrounded by a cladding that has a greater refractive index of the core meaning that the light is able to continue traveling along the core without being affected by its outer coating. How fast does this light travel? Brace yourself, because the typical speed of light along optical fiber is around 200,000 kilometers an hour. So a little bit faster than that time you're racing home because you're drunk too much. This technology allows for long distance, rapid communication of high volumes of data without the risk of electromagnetic interference that many traditional metal cables are prone to. As well as this, these fibers can serve a purpose for lighting and imaging. Credit given where credit is due though, I certainly didn't invent optical fibers. A lot of that credit goes to Indian board physicist Narinda Kapani, based in the UK. He officially coined the term fiber optics in 1956, along with the development of the first functional fiber optic cable. Although he certainly wasn't the first person to be working on such a topic, much of the work was built upon by Irish inventor John Tyndall in the 1850s. And his work was built upon by work carried out back in the 1840s by two French inventors called Daniel Collodon and Jacques Babinet. They certainly didn't research all this stuff lightly. <laughs> huh? Huh? No? Thank you. I'll be here all week. So how can we transmit data via light? That just doesn't add up. Light? Data? How are they the same? Well, computers transmit by taking an input, processing it through code, which instructs the computer what to do with that input and then outputting it as an electrical signal. Ah, so for fiber optics, that electrical signal is converted into light signal where it's allowed to travel along the fiber, where at the receiving end, the light signal is then converted back into the electrical signal, where it can then become machine readable. We may have had more conversions than a rugby player, but we got there in the end. Now I'm going to ask you a question, a really important question. I need you to search within, look deeply. Okay, are you ready? How? How many types of fiber optic cable are there? Oh, not, not what you're expecting? Oh, any guesses? The correct answer is two. So these two cables, what are they? Well, we have single mode cables, which have a narrow coil of around eight to 10 microns on average, where a single wavelength of light is able to travel. 
This is best for long distance communications as the focused light is able to travel further, but is usually more expensive than its counterpart. Its counterpart is a multi-mode cable, which has a much wider core of around 50 microns or greater that allows for multiple light signal transmissions. While these cables may often wind up being cheaper than single mode, they don't carry data for as long of a distance without suffering from signal quality decline. This is not to say though that fiber optics are perfect. Light degradation is a thing. Due to impurities within the glass or plastic fibers, some light may escape due to a loss of total internal reflection. A higher quality cable with lower impurities should lead to a lower level of light degradation, meaning a more reliable and stronger connection. <coughs> it's at this point of the show, I would like to invite premium fiber optic cable companies interested in potential sponsorship opportunities to apply now. Fiber optics, while they may seem simple at first glance, the depth of science involved is quite impressive. Communication by a light. I'm sure that could well have blown people's minds a few hundred years ago. It really goes to show just how far we have come technology-wise in such a short space of time. And it's a technology that often gets somewhat overlooked by more current, trendier inventions. I certainly have found a new appreciation for these optical fibers. Now, I've got a phone call to Arnie to make. Stay hungry for factuality.